Hey guys, Mopar Tech here. Hey, I had um, been away for a little while. Hopefully I can get some more of these videos up. I want to do one on how to make your own pressure transducers and use your own lab scope. So I'm going to turn the camera over to give you an idea of the pressure transducer that I used in the previous video and let you see the part numbers. So bear with me just a minute. Okay, so here is the Johnson Control pressure transducer and here's the part number that I use to make my own pressure transducer. Now I'm going to roll this label a little bit so you guys can kind of read it uh, ever so slightly. As you can see right here from the information, it is, it is a 0 to 500 pressure uh, pounds per square inch pressure transducer. Excuse me. And if you see the input voltage down here, it is 4.75 to 5.25 volts DC class 2 so if you're interested in the part number for this I bought this at Granger now get my thumb up here from here up is all I bought at Granger now the rest of it is just you know an air coupler and a piece of tube with some fittings on it but you know you can adapt it and make your own you know, but eventually you're going to need to put it on a uh, coupler like this, just a regular air coupler, uh, to go into your uh, compression on your compression gauge hose. So I'm going to throw up this first video like this, just so you all can get the part number, and then I'm going to go over a little bit about how to make your own voltage regulator for this with some very simple electronic parts that you can buy at Radio Shack. When I say Radio Shack, because I know a lot of them closed down in my area, but you can order uh, the parts from an electronic supply place online. So, like I said, here's the part number. I ordered it at Granger. I've had this a couple years. I think, don't quote me on the price, but I think it was around $125. Uh, well under what, uh, you know, you could buy one of these setups off the tool truck. But anyway... Roll this around here one more time for you guys so you can kind of see it. And if you need to, stop the video so you can get the information. Let's roll back over here to the part number. Like I said, it is a Johnson Control, and there is the part number. Now, I believe this is for a, a AC unit from a building. Um, well, I know that's what it is. But anyway, here's the part number. And the electrical connector is a three pin. Now, you guys that work in a GM dealership, let me see if I can get a better shot of that. Uh, it's not real clear, but uh, it's just a three pin. Let me go over here and show you the, uh, this is the box that I made. This has all the electronics in it with a switch. It's the voltage regulator setup. Let me get the, uh, sorry for shaking the camera. See this plug right here? Now, I don't work in a GM dealership, but I, I know that there are certain sensors on the GM that use the same plug. But I say that to say, you know, if you don't, if you can't find this plug, you can order this plug through Granger also, because that's what I did. Um, but then, I, of course, I cut it off and wired it into my, my box here. Now, at the end of this box, uh, there's two connectors positive and negative lead that goes into your lab scope. Okay. So it's very simple. So let me crack open the old uh, voltage supply that I made here for you and show you exactly what's in it and how you can make your own. Okay, so here is the voltage supply for the pressure transducer. Now, let me follow these leads. I think we went over this just a little bit earlier, but Here's for your lab scope, your lab scope leads, okay, or your voltmeter, whatever. And they go into the top right here. This other lead is the three wire uh, signal return and voltage supply that goes to your transducer. Now, basically, all that's in here is a breadboard, there's a voltage regulator down here, okay, there's a battery. And there's a cutoff switch right here okay i'm going to draw a little uh, diagram right quick because it might be a little easier if i do that just to show you how to wire it up uh where it would be more simple so let me do that you know i did take the tape off my uh, 
connections here just so you can see how you know it's put together soldered together a little bit but i think if i draw this out for you it might be just a little bit better uh, if you guys are familiar with three wire sensors it's the same process you've got a voltage supply a ground and a return so we've got a battery we've got a five volt this is a nine volt battery obviously we've got a five volt regulator in here which regulates it down to five volts because if you uh, remember on the pressure transducer it's a five volt pressure transducer input voltage so let me draw this out a little bit and see if I can help you out okay let's go over what we got here got your nine volt battery positive and negative what come off the positive see I bought a little adapter here you know just a nine volt adapter I'm going to come over go through your on off switch which is right here on the side come out of your nine or out of your switch I'm sorry and then on your voltage regulator right here it's going to have three terminals you're going to have a voltage input a five volt output and a ground all right so what we've got here voltage switch your voltage supply into the regulator and you've got a ground now you're going to have four ground points right here so you've got your, your return back to the battery your ground on your voltage regulator they're all spliced here together it's going to go to your lead so you have two scope leads you have a red one and a black one or ground okay it's going to be tied in here and then you're also going to have your ground for your pressure transducer so your pressure transducer has three wires five volts which comes from your regulator to supply five volt five volts i'm sorry five volts to the pressure transducer you're going to have your return that goes straight to your red lead to your scope and then like i said this is the ground for your pressure transducer Let's go over it again. Nine volt battery switch, five volt regulator, your leads for your scope, and then your leads for your pressure transducer. Voltage, nine volts out through the switch into the regulator, your ground, four ground wires right here, one from the battery, one from your voltage regulator, the ground for your pressure transducer and then the ground for your lead that goes to your scope then your 5 volt reference to feed your pressure transducer and then your return out of your pressure transducer red lead to your scope so one more time let's look inside here and see if we can tell 9 volt battery you got a switch on the side Take it up here. Right, see, see the regulator back there on a piece of breadboard. Then you've got your leads that go out to your scope, which you know is just some leads that I made. And then your other lead comes out and goes to your pressure transducer. Anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, this little box right here. This is just a hobby box that I bought at uh, Radio Shack you can use any type of uh, box just make sure it's not conductive obviously you don't want anything to get in here short out but I've soldered all these wires together and anyway so I hope this helps a lot but this is the exact uh, tool that I made and used in the previous video uh, somebody asked me about uh, how to make the pressure transducer set up and this is how I did it now, if you're interested, I'm going to show you another pressure transducer that I made to check fuel pressure. Let me get it out and I'll show you in just a second. Okay, this is a fuel pressure uh, transducer that I made that I hook up to my uh, MODIS and I can drive down the road and monitor fuel pressure or any, any kind of pressure. But I've hooked it up on, uh, sorry, let me get my camera up here, uh, you know, an adapter that I can hook up to a fuel rail with some adapters or whatever I need, but it's just a coupler, a hose, a pressure transducer, and then of course it's the plug. Now, I decided that I wanted to try to make my own setup like this 
obviously to save some money but uh, I found that you know I can make these things a lot cheaper than I can buy them off a tool truck now believe it or not this is a Mopar oil pressure transducer and here's the part number if you're interested in that now if you go and you go to a Mopar dealer uh, this is a uh, like I said, it's an oil pressure transducer out of a Hemi. Or a uh, 3.6 Pentastar engine. And then you can order, you know, if you want to, the electrical adapter. They can order that for you. You know, I'll just cut it off and adapt it to, you know, the plugs that I'm using. But I have used this several times to uh, be able to drive down the road and monitor fuel pressure. You know, if I thought fuel, uh, fuel pump was taking a crap, you know, causing an intermittent drivability issue, uh, I do use this a lot. I particularly like it because, as you can see, we back up a little bit. The length of this hose is relatively short. So this is, this is all the hose that I have connected to the fuel pressure. Everything else coming out from underneath the hood is electrical. You know, it's a little bit safer. You're not trying to... Uh, have a gauge stuck on the windshield or something like that, but hopefully that'll help a little bit. Oh, in case I failed to mention, this is a hundred, a 100 pound pressure transducer. And I don't, I don't know if you guys have a modus or not, uh, but this is a modus that I use uh, if I want to go drive. I do have another lab scope set up that I like immensely. Um, it is, let me get turned around here for you guys. It's a PC-based lab scope. Let me open it up and show you what I'll do. This is actually a four-channel scope. Uh, it records. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with my phone. But it is a four-channel scope. It comes with leads, uh, the software to hook it up. Uh, I love this scope. Now, it's not real conducive to driving down the road. You know, it does take a lot to hook it up. But if you're doing heavy drivability, uh, diagnosis you know this is the scope to have if I'm going to drive you know with my pressure transducer or anything like that um, I usually use my modus yeah a little easier a little quicker to set up okay so I want to show you the fuel pressure transducer a little bit about it I'll give you the part number and stuff so we've got the pressure transducer it's wired up exactly the same as we did our in cylinder pressure transducer same way same thing it's a three wire sensor got a voltage supply cuts it down to supplies five volts here we're going to go into our modus and we're going to click uh scope menu. i'm trying to look through my phone and do this so forgive me if i shake a little bit lab scope i'm going to scroll down to 100 pound pressure transducer It's going to ask you if you want to calibrate it. Now, at this point, you need to make sure that your power is on, and there's no, and it's not hooked up to anything. Don't calibrate it with it hooked up to a fuel rail with some residual pressure. We're going to click yes, and as you can see, it's zeroed out. All right. Well, let me see if I can find a vehicle to hook it up to, and I'll show you how it works. Thank you guys for watching the first video and subscribing to my channel. I had a large number of people who watched the video and uh, gave it a thumbs up. And a lot of people that asked me to do a video like this on how to make your own pressure transducer setup with a voltage regulation supply. Uh, good luck in making your own. Uh, feel free to stop the video, write down the part numbers. Uh, good luck in making your own. Uh, these are two that I know that have proven out for me to work correctly. Uh, good luck.
put in the comment section any other videos about any other subjects that you all would like me to try to do videos on. Uh, I try to do these uh, at work, you know, as I run across these problems. So, you know, these are not professional videos that I'm doing. I'm having to do them a lot with a GoPro and my iPhone, you know, just when I run across these situations uh, in my bay. So I hope you enjoy these. I hope they're uh, informative to you. And please share my channel. And God bless.